Praise God. Good morning, Hope Church, people of God, friends, family. God bless you today. God has given us another opportunity to gather together where we can build and maintain a healthy hope, a strong kingdom, and a godly future. Working together in the presence of God where we can uphold his name, we can be a witness to the world that Jesus Christ is Lord. We're, we're his people, the sheep of his pasture, and he has called us, placed us, anointed and appointed us for this time that we could be examples of his grace, his mercy, and his strength. So let's go to, uh, to our Father in prayer, and then we'll have our word for this morning. Let us pray together. Master God, we thank you. We praise you for your love, your kindness. We thank you for your grace and your mercy. We thank you that you are our God and you give us opportunity to come before you, to hear your word, to celebrate you, to remind ourselves how strong and powerful, how loving and kind you are and how much you care about us. So God, we give your name praise. We give you honor and glory. We ask God that you would equip us, that we might live faithfully before you and for you today in this your world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise God. Well, saints, this morning we're going to look at Psalm 9. So if you have your devices or your, your, your Bible, turn with me to Psalm number 9, and we're looking at verses 9 and 10. Psalm 9, 9 and 10. It reads, The Lord, if a, the Lord is a refuge for the oppressed, a stronghold in times of trouble. Those who know your name will trust you. For you, O Lord, have not abandoned those who seek you. In this text, the psalmist is writing to, to individuals who might be feeling like, um, like we're feeling now. If they, if they don't know what their situation was particularly, but they were going through something. They felt uh, pressure and, and there was internal turmoil, a little unrest. So the psalmist is speaking to them and reminding them of, of why they can take rest, why they have peace. And, and he's talking to the Lord. He's praying to God about them, about who, who they are. In fact, he's probably praying about himself. So it's not a bad idea for us to go to God, not only for others, but to, to go for ourselves, reminding ourselves who God is by telling God what we know about him. In the psalm, the, the psalmist is writing to individuals or, as I said, possibly feeling himself oppressed. And he's calling them the people who's are, who are in a time of trouble. Now, to be oppressed here in this text is more than just someone um, oppressing us. It's more than just bad actors applying their authority over us and, and limiting us. This word oppressed simply means to, to be crushed, to, to be injured, to be afflicted. To be, uh, there's external forces that, that are working against you that, des that are designed or at least they're functioning to hold you back, to push you away, to keep you from achieving your goal. And, and today we're feeling in many ways oppressed. This virus has pushed many of us into our homes. It has caused many of us to walk away from our jobs. And it's, it's, it's outside of our control. It's outside of our bodies, but it's doing something that's crushing our way of life. And the psalmist is speaking to folk here who may be feeling like you, like it, I would do something if there was anything for me to do. If I, if I had stre the strength or the wherewithal to fight this thing or to overcome it, I would. And, and so we're feeling in, in a real sense of the word oppressed, crushed. But he's also speaking to those who are, are considering themselves or find themselves in what he's calling a time of trouble. A time of trouble is a season or an occasion where there's distress or, or conflict, anguish on the inside. You, you feel as though uh, there's, there's depression and hopelessness that's rising up within. You see, he's talking here to the whole person because many times stuff that happen on the outside of us have this negative impact on the inside. We, the world around us can, can make our spirits dark. And we can, it can quiet our, our, our enthusiasm. It, it can cause us to slip into depression or a sense of hopelessness because it seems like the giant is too big. The situation is too large. The, it, the weight is too heavy. 
And so we start feeling bad about who we are, what we are, or, or even some of the choices we have to make. We, we're individuals who, who take care of our responsibilities, but now we don't have the wherewithal to do that. So we start feeling some kind of way, feeling bad. And so he's saying to us, even if you're oppressed or there's this internal conflict happening in you and you're going through this time of trouble, he's, he's reminding himself and others as he talks to God that God is our refuge. You see, it didn't say that God will be our refuge. It didn't say that God is going to be or used to be. It is a isness. It's that's a, an eternal right now. God is eternally right now our refuge. As long as God is, he is our hiding place. He is the place where we can come and find rest and peace. Our God is our refuge in, in moments of trouble and, and trial, oppression and, tr and, and conflict and depression. We can run to God. He is our strong tower. You see, the word here that, that the psalmist used for refuge, it, it, it's, it's both refuge and stronghold. It, it, what it means is a, a high place. A high place that's inaccessible. It's a, a safe place because God lifts you above the, the stuff that's going on and he puts you on a rock, a, a place that is higher than high, a place where the trouble can't reach, where the enemy can't reach you. You're in this, this, this cliff, this, this, this high place, this high tower that is Christ. And he holds us up above all the stuff that's going on in our lives. So there's wars happening, but we can have peace because God is our high tower. Do you get it? God is the place where uh, he is our high tower. He's not going to put us in a high tower. He is our high tower. So we are made safe and comfortable. We are, 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 are relieved from the oppressions of this world because God places us in himself. God places us under his arm of protection, under his authority, under his power. And when God places us in himself, we're reminded that he, can, he is greater than all. That's why the psalmist says that those who know your name will trust you. You see, he, the psalmist says those who have an experience with who you are, those who know you, those who know your reputation, they won't have any trouble trusting you. See, to know his name is to, to know what he has done, to know that he's brought you out before. It is to understand his track record. So the psalmist says, if they know your name, if they know that you're all powerful, if they know that you're all wise, if they know you're all loving, if they know you're all kind, if they know you as a deliverer, if they know you as a savior, if they know your track record, they'll trust you in the midst of their oppression and the midst of their times of trouble. And when they trust you, you put them in the high tower. Because here is your track record, Lord. This is what the psalmist says is there. Your track record is you've never abandoned anyone who came to seek you. God has never turned anyone away, rejected anyone, refused anyone, denied anyone. He has never lost anyone who wanted to be with him. So it, all you have to have is the desire for God, and he will transport you to the, to the refuge. He will take you to the high place. If you can desire him, if you can want him, if you can choose him in the midst of your struggle, God will lift you above because the text says he will not lose you. He will not abandon you. He will not let you go. He will not relinquish you. He will not, he will not turn you over. He will hold on to you. He is our keeper. All you need is a heart for God and God will keep you. All you need is a heart for God, and God will not let you go. Turn your mind, turn your heart, turn your spirit over to God. Desire him. He will not let you go. The psalmist says that you've not abandoned those, not a one who, who sought after you, not a one who seek you. That is God's record, people of God. That's who we serve. So yes, this world is oppressive, and yes, Sometimes we feel anguish and, 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 and disturbance and confusion inside of us. But if we have a heart for God, turn your mind toward God. Think on the things that is Jesus. If you would do that, God will lift you above. 
See, everything you think of, God will remind you. He'll build your spirit. And with every thought of, of God's greatness, you're putting a stone in the tower. God will lift you and put you in himself where he can keep you safe because he will not abandon you, nor will he relinquish you to anything that comes to attack. So family of God, people of God, today, let's remind each other. Let's bless each other. Tell each other that God still got you. You are still in the hand of God. You may be going through it, but God is still holding on to you. Let us call each other. Let us tell each other that no matter what you're going through, no matter what you've been through, God will not let you go. He's got a hold of you. So go ahead. Go ahead and tell the devil he's a liar. You are not defeated. You are an overcomer. You're not a, a, a loser. You are a victor. You win because God said so. He won't let you go. So call somebody. Text somebody. Encourage your heart today. Do it with hashtag Healthy Hope 2020. Hashtag HH20. Do, do that. And let's make sure we take care of one another. Because we are the people of God. And God has equipped us and made us ready for this moment. He has put, put you in this place because he made you strong enough to be his witness. So tell folk that Jesus Christ is still Lord. Let them know. Because you, you got it. You got the juice. You, you're strong enough, and you can make it happen. So let's do that together. So hope, don't forget, be safe, be responsible, but most importantly, be faithful. Be faithful, because God, he's always holding on to you. Now, don't forget that tomorrow morning at 6 o'clock, First Lady will be here leading us in our guided prayer again. So make sure you sign on at 6 o'clock in the morning. I'll be back at 8 o'clock tomorrow morning. We'll have another one of our, our words of encouragement. And um, don't prepare yourself now. We're going to have our Good Friday worship. It's going to be via Zoom. Our, our, our preachers, our Hope Church preachers, God bless them for our clergy team. They will be bringing a word. Each of them will be giving you a word of encouragement. So make sure you come and hear them and, and hear what God has to say through these anointed men and women of God. That's on Friday. Friday evening, you'll be getting a, uh, an invite to do so. It's at 8 o'clock on Friday. So let's make sure we're together. Amen? All right. Let's have a word of prayer. Master God, we thank you. We praise you. We choose to stay in your hand. We choose to think on you today. For we, God, will trust you without reserve, without retreat and without any regret. No reserve, no retreat, no regret. God bless you. In Jesus' name, amen. Bless your Hope family. See you tomorrow.